Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you all for joining us for another Microsoft Reactor live stream event. My name is Rebecca Karen, and I am the New York Reactor event planner. And I'm help happy to welcome Scott Hanselman and Sharita Ousley back again for episode two of Let's Learn C Sharp. This session will run for approximately 60 minutes. Uh, we'll be answering questions throughout. Just feel free to drop them into the chat. Um, if you're joining us on YouTube, you should be able to uh, submit and add your closed captions. Um, if you want to follow along that way, it's one of the session options. Please uh, review our code of conduct, also dropped in the chat. And we encourage everyone to assist in creating a welcoming and safe environment while we move forward today. At this time, I will let Scott and Sharita take the floor. Welcome, everyone. Hello. Thanks for morning. another great session. Hello, hello. It's morning. Looking forward to it. It's early. So. It's early. <laughs> 8 a.m. on the West Coast. Not really feeling that. Not really it's feeling very that. Very early. <laughs> so I will switch over to your screen, Scott, if that works for you. Yeah, let's do that. And then there's some folks in the chat who are having some trouble with the URL. Yep, I'm going to recopy and paste that. Yep, I'm going to fix that. Sorry, when I posted it, it merged the sentence following with the link. So I no will. No worries, no worries. <laughs> technical so we'll issues on a technical session. All right, cool. I'm going to pop off here and let you guys get started. Lovely. Thank you very much. All right. So it is day two, Sharita, day two. And uh, yesterday, we encouraged folks to go to this URL. You can see mm -hmm. my browser where I was looking at the Nintendo games that were announced yesterday. So don't uh, judge me by my <laughs> interest. But I, I just felt like Legend of Zelda is coming out as a new one and then Metroid. So I was pretty stoked about that. But I'm sure you're not the only one. one. Yeah, I think pretty much everybody has all those tabs open. Uh -huh. So dot .NET microsoft.com slash learn to code. The trick is if you get to the .NET homepage, you might find yourself over here and you come up to the URL and you put in slash learn to code. That brings you to this new page. So you know you're at the right page if it says, hi friends. Now we have a coding pack and we did this yesterday, but we can run through it real fast today. Yeah. We have a coding pack. It works on Mac or Windows. We did have a couple of friends yesterday who were using Ubuntu. We updated the web page yesterday. So if you already have .NET and VS Code, you can just install these two things, interactive notebooks. And then we put in a link right here that says, get started with our 101 notebook. That's the one you and I did yesterday. And this link is kind of an interesting and cool link. If I click on it, it actually will pop up a warning because it's not a real HTTP link, it's a Visual Studio Code link, yeah. It's gonna try to open VS Code. So I have to say that that's okay. And I'm gonna hit okay. And then VS Code will open up and you'll get into this C-sharp for beginners workbook, right? And this workbook here, we had, here's our one from yesterday where you and I had changed it. That workbook will open up directly in here. And mm -hmm. as we saw yesterday, We'll go back to the top. We've got some pros in this little box right here. That's some pros. And each box or each cell has got text. And then it's either a code box or a markdown box. So this is a markdown box. And this is a code box. And if, if you know it's working, if you can go and hit the play button and you get it saying hello world or whatever. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Had you ever seen notebooks before? I have um, not notebooks, but I use Visual Studio Code Insiders, and so okay. So you're using the Insiders version, and they had mm -hmm. notebooks in there, exactly. But this idea of having text and links, like it's almost like documentation, and then code, is something that in the past uh, Python people have seen. It was called Jupyter, um, and that's now been released inside this notebooks concept is inside of Visual Studio code mm -hmm. uh, instead of in here, you're in the insiders build. And this idea here is called .NET interactive notebooks, because if you look over here in the corner, these are called polyglot notebooks. So they can have multiple languages, which is pretty cool. 
we're learning C sharp today, but it, you know, F sharp's another language and mm -hmm. there's other cool languages in JavaScript. I know that you are a TypeScript programmer. So for context, your primary world is what? It's uh, TypeScript and React? Yes, yes. Cool. So you're but not- But I have not used this in Java. I haven't tried it out. Yeah, um, it's pretty cool. Yeah, you were saying yesterday that you were pretty impressed. It's a cool way to learn because at this yes. point, we haven't made an app, right? You know, we're, we're living in a notebook, which is an unusual thing. Do you think that you would have learned differently if you'd done it like this? Because we, we think this is a great way for people to learn the language and then you learn the ecosystem. Yes, I agree with that because it, it takes away all of the fluff and the things that you kind of ignore at the beginning to just focus on the language. But when you mm -hmm. learn every, when you're trying to take in everything at one time, it, it kind of makes things a little bit complicated uh, and it, it, it kind of just slows down the beginning learning process. So right. that's a great point. And yesterday you had made the point that when we learn how to say hello world, if we go back to the top, when I learned hello world, there was a bunch of crap around it. You mm -hmm. said fluff, right? Using namespace, <laughs> class, public static board. And people just say, don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. I don't like people telling me not to worry about stuff because now I'm going to worry about exactly mm -hmm. that and I'm not going to focus on the code, you know? Yeah. So this notebook isn't an app yet, right? It's just text plus uh, code. And we got into it. I think we were down here doing variables when we ran out of time yesterday. And you had suggested that maybe we hit the gas a little bit and we kind of bang through the rest of this notebook and then you were interested in seeing some more apps and then maybe asking some deeper questions about hey, what's going on underneath because yes. we're kind of driving automatic shift car right now and you were interested in driving stick shift <laughs> yeah yeah that's a great analogy yeah i think what happens when we do something like this is we're hiding a lot of stuff aren't we yes you know, we're, we're compiling this code we're turning this code into into an output, but just like the way that like TypeScript and JavaScript are hidden from you, they're in the browser, there's a runtime, there's a thing that makes the code run. There's a .NET runtime, the, mm -hmm. the component that takes that and makes it happen. It's being hidden from you completely right now. Like we don't even know where the files on the disk are. It's, it's like it's down in temporary file somewhere right now. Okay, so let's go a little bit through uh, some variables uh, and talk about casting, do some for loops and then see how we how we do, okay? Yeah, let's do it. All right, cool. So when last we left our heroes, we were talking about integers and doubles and different kinds of data types. And these data types here, they are turning color in our syntax highlighting editor because they're special. So if I were to go and say, you know, person P, well, there isn't a thing called a person. So mm -hmm. A person didn't turn color. That's not a thing. Uh, and if I said character key, character is not a thing, but char is a thing. If I said integer, that doesn't turn in. That doesn't turn color. But int does. And stringy isn't, but string mm -hmm. is. So you see, as soon as I hit the keyword, the keyword then goes and turns purple. So these are keywords. You can't have a string or you don't want to have a string called, you can do it, but you don't want to like string string. See mm -hmm. how it's like, eh, you been mad? Yeah, it's like you can't call a string string, right? You can't call an int int. So yeah. These are reserved, reserved words. And every language has got, you know, some reserved words. And then we saw yesterday, I was making a couple of mistakes where I forgot that semicolon. And uh, you don't need to do that. TypeScript is pretty chill about their semicolons. Yeah, we don't use them actually. <laughs> oh, see, there's a whole, I heard there's a whole controversy because like old timers want the semicolons and new the new school are like, no, let, let the compiler figure it out. But here you can see everything becomes squiggly town and nobody likes to lose their semicolon. So the semicolon in C sharp is like a period at the end of the sentence. So yes. they'll warn you. So that's a little confusing. And then we saw this example here where I said, I want an integer and I'm going to put a big number in it and I got a squiggly. Squiggly saying, that looks like a double. That looks like a big weird number and you're trying to shove it into an int. You're trying to put a big thing into a small box. Are you missing a cast? And we had talked yesterday, you had said that um, the JavaScript is pretty chill about, uh, about types. Just 
var mm-hmm. every day. Would you say var or whatever? And so it's like, yeah, var, whatever. Var, and just, constant, yeah, yeah, let. And it just figures out if it's a string. It just knows. Like, yeah, it's a string. It makes a guess. It's loose, loose typing, right? Yes. Um, here, .NET doesn't like that. .NET strongly typed. So I have to either give it an int, then the squiggly goes away, or it's like, well, you got to be explicit. Are you sure you want to shove that big number in this small number? And then you can go like this, and you can do a you can do a cast. The problem is when you do that cast, look at the value of eleven point da 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 da. da. That, that last part of the decimal, we, we chopped it off. It got lost. When you try to shove something big into a small space, pe- pieces are going to get scraped off and they're going to fall off and you're going to end up with less. So we lost that number. If I try to shove a string into a character, I'm going to get a character because a character is one, one character. Question here from Mary, who's asking the difference between Visual Studio Code and Visual Studio 2019. We'll get into a little bit of that later, but Visual Studio 2019 is what's called an IDE, an Integrated Development Environment. It's like everything. It's got toolbars and testing integrated, and you can deploy to Azure directly, and it's, it's a whole universe. While Visual Studio Code is what's called a code editor. Now, it does have an extension thing where you can like add stuff to it but out of the box out of the box visual studio code basically edits text files it edits your code right but when you want to set it up for react or typescript like sharita does you gotta add some stuff you gotta add a little thing um so it's a nice starter place um if you like to customize things it's kind of a sports car but visual studio 2019 which is free you can get the free community version or Visual Studio um, 2022, which is coming out uh, soon. Here's what it looks like. And if I were going to go and create a new project in Visual Studio 2019, which we'll do a little bit later, it's got all these choices. I can make Android apps and iOS apps, cloud applications, web apps. But it looks like kind of the... the somebody actually told me once that they felt like... Uh, Visual Studio Code was like the cockpit of like a Tesla. It's like very sleek. It's very simple, um, but complicated underneath. But then Visual Studio 2019 is like flying an airplane and there's dashboards and buttons and it's like a lot of cool functionality. So some people keep them both and some people don't. Um, And then, um, uh, so that's how I think about it. And you spend most of your time in VS Code, right? Yes, I do. That's how I was going to bring up another question. Why do we... Um, use maybe like Visual Studio for um, back end, and we mm-hmm. just use Visual Studio Code for the front end because I spend most of my time in Visual Studio Code. Mm. So Visual Studio Code, uh, you know, came out at a different time and has a different use because Visual Studio uh, 2019 only runs on Mac and on Windows. And here, here's here's a program. This is actually my own personal website inside of Visual Studio. Uh, 2019. You can see it's got different icons. It's got a lot more going on. It's a pretty complicated application. Um, Enterprises, big companies use it. You can see I've got profilers to check my performance. I can look at memory. I can do detailed analysis of big enterprise applications. So you made the comment about the front end Mm -hmm. and the back end. Now, you, you mostly do front end work, but you're consuming back end Yes. Stuff. Yes. Okay. So the front end means like your monitor. It's it's the browser. Yes. It's the front of the app, the stuff you see. So you're you're making buttons and stuff. Somebody on the back end in the in the server room is getting data out of a database and giving it to you. Yes. Traditionally, and this is a generalization, traditionally you see back end people using the Visual Studio 2019. And they're interested in how much memory is the server using? And is it being responsive? And does it get Sharita her data quickly? And those diagnostic tools are inside that application. While your app on Visual Studio Code is really great for um, laying out your web pages, making yes. sure everything looks nice, split screen, all kinds of cool mm-hmm. stuff. You can have both. So great question for Mary. 
Um, and then don't feel like one's better or different than the other. Like cars are cars. Sometimes you drive a motorcycle. Sometimes you drive a sports car. Sometimes you drive a minivan. And here's another great point, actually. Let's 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 mention this. I'm gonna right click up here on the in the menu. Okay, I'm right clicking on this tab. And I'm gonna right click, and you see the menu pops up, like close the editor and things like that. I'm gonna click Reveal in File Explorer. Okay. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna show me the notebook file. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna go to the start menu, and folks can follow along if they want to. And I'm just gonna type notepad. Here's Notepad. Now we know that Notepad is not Visual Studio. There's no question that Visual that Notepad has nothing to do with code. It's just Notepad. I'm going to pick up the, the the notebook, and I'm going to drop it directly into Notepad. So, see where it says built-in variable types? Let's go find that built-in. I'm just going to do a find. Okay, here we go. This here is this here. You see the little code there, a little markdown. Here's mm -hmm. the link. Look, here's the C sharp. You can't see this part here, but this is just a little part that says, hey, some C sharp is coming. And then, oop, now we're switching back to markdown. I could, if I wanted to, write my code in Notepad. I would, I don't need Visual Studio. And this is like a really important thing to think about. Like you don't need Microsoft Word. You can just do it all in text, right? You don't need mm -hmm. Excel. Well, maybe you do. Kind of Excel is a bad idea, but you know what I mean? Like <laughs> the tools make things better and better and better. Yeah. But that's like beyond drive and stick shift. This is like pushing the car. <laughs> <laughs> this, would not be, this would not be fun to, to, to write your code in Notepad. But people like, like do that sometimes. There's lots of different editors. And Notepad or Notepad++ is one. Lewis Hogan in the chat is asking, uh, what's a what point do you switch over to a full IDE? Honestly, my opinion is when it feeds your spirit. Try them, see how you like it. Um, I do a lot of basic work in VS Code. A lot of people bling out VS Code with all kinds of cool features. I've changed my theme here. This is my Beyonce theme. Um, but I use Visual Studio when I do a lot of web work and a lot of Azure work. Um, so really, just try them both. You can go to visualstudio.com slash free, and you can install it for free. So, yeah, Karen in the chat is saying that they, you could write code in Vim, you know, VI or Emacs. There's all kinds of different ways to do it. Um, but C Sharp can be written in both. And because we like these notebooks, we're going to write them in uh, in here. We'll, we'll switch over maybe tomorrow to via Visual Studio and, and compare. Yeah. Okay? That's a good idea. All right. So, um, now we had talked about strong typing. So talking about strong typing, but I think in TypeScript and in JavaScript, they have a thing called var. And this is new to C Sharp, newish, last couple of years. Check this out. See how I didn't put int or, or um, string or char mm -hmm, or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying var. What this is doing, it looks like it's loose. Like you were talking about how JavaScript's like, yeah, whatever. Yep. It's not loose. It just means figure it out now. But once it's figured out, it's stuck. So let's look at var foo. That's clearly a string, right? Yes. It's a string. So if I hover over foo, it says string. OK. And this is clearly a number, so it's probably an int. So I'll hover over the look int. OK. Now let's try to take foo, which we've just made a string right here. And then we'll say foo equals 99. Mm. It's not Can't happening. Do it. Yes. So it's 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 trying to give people the kind of comfort of making a variable whenever. But once it's set, once its type is set, I can change the value, right? I could say Scott equal, uh, foo equals Scott. So once it's a string, I can mess with string. But once the type has been set, I can't say I equals Scott because we decided already that I is an int. So have you ever heard the term syntactic sugar? Yes. It's just a little sugar. They just sprinkled a little sugar on it. So var is just a little kind of sugar that makes things easier. Terry Andre and the Terry Andre in the chat is asking what the scope of it is. It's the same scope as any other variable. So this I is going to live 
for you know inside of a function or in this case in the cell and beyond. So it's the exact same scope as anything else. So there's literally no difference between going like this, going like this, or going like that. It is sugar. And I kind of think it's cool. Some people don't like it because they're like, I don't know what a foo is. And the problem is later on, you start scrolling away and someone uses foo and you're like, what is a foo? You gotta go back and figure it out, right? So you can always just hover your mouse and it'll tell you that it's uh, got a type, but this is just sugar, but you can't change it afterwards. All right, now what is this thing mad about here? There we go. So here we're calling a function. There's a function that's built in called display. We're passing in that variable name. Every single thing in, uh, in C-sharp can be turned into a string at, uh, at the time of displaying it. So if I were gonna go and give it like I, which we know is a, no. Uh, an integer, it's going to output that number. It's going to turn it into a string and then spit it out. I could say i dot to string. I'm taking i, I'm calling the to string method, but I don't need that. It's kind of implied. Mm -hmm. But every object in C sharp can be a string whenever they uh, whenever they feel like it. Okay. All right. Let's get into some the meat. We talked about type casting. We saw this part here. I can take a number, like a like a decimal or a long number, and I can say, no, I really want you to be an, an integer. I really want you to be a string. But when we do that, of course, we could lose, we could lose precision. We could lose precision. Um, we talked a little bit about operators yesterday. We were, mm -hmm. plus, we were plussing strings. And plussing things, adding things is super interesting uh, because if in this example here, we have apples and oranges, right? So we're going to add them together or subtract them. What if I made apples a string? So now I'm going to add a string to a decimal. decimal. Okay. Mm -hmm. ah, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. So apples is a string. Oranges is a decimal. It worked. Which kind of feels right. Here's a question though. What if we did oranges plus apples? Yeah, that worked too. So what, go ahead. What if we had an int? Oh, good one. Okay. So let's do ints plus decimals. Okay. And this is what's great about notebooks, right? Notebooks lets you go and do these things, right? So what if we had that? Now we're really mixing types here. Okay. Okay. Let's try flipping it around. See if the order of things matters. Oh. Or integers and in strings. That. Yeah. So let's do integers and strings. Let's make this one an integer and let's make that one. No, it's working. So it's ah. trying to do the right thing, right? It's trying to do the right thing because ultimately it's going to turn into a string. There are times when if I were to go and take the result of this, let's go back and let's say decimal 30, you know, 3.5, let's say. And I go and add that, I'll expect to see 13.5. If I went like this, now this is going to get a little weird because there's going to be a lot of parentheses, parentheses, int. So this is just like algebra where you, you put parentheses around stuff to tell you the order. I'm saying mm -hmm. add these up, which we know is 13.5, and then make the result an int. Take it all up, make it an int, and then we'll output the display. So you thought the 0.5 just got chopped. And had we not been using the display method, these things wouldn't add as easily, but because the display method is already converting them to strings, What's it's going to add. Let's find out. So display is a method that's built in. Let's try console.writeLine, mm -hmm. which isn't a, a thing, which is built in. The display is part of notebooks. So that's a great question. So let's do that. Nope. So it looks like it doesn't have anything to do with that. Now, remember yesterday, you had a great point yesterday where you said, what about splitting this up? Let's put it on another line. Remember how we said, do you mm -hmm. need to put these things all on one line? Let's do this. 
because this is, you know, a lot more clear. And it lets you see the number for a second. So let's try this. Nope. So it's not being done by this. It's not display. It's not right line. It's it's the it's what's called the type system is doing the work. And it's doing the work as best it can. If I get rid of this mm -hmm. hint, which we'll get rid of our parentheses as well. We're adding a int and a double. Decimal. I think this one's a double. I think you have to put an M to make it a decimal. A decimal is just an even bigger, longer number. It's an even crazier number. The result is the same. Now here, look at this. Int plus decimal equals decimal. Because a decimal is the only thing that could hold a decimal and an int. Okay. It's, okay. They, they automatically make the biggest type to fit it because they don't want you to lose your data. But if we made this an int, it's probably going to say, look, this, this whole thing here, apples plus oranges, that's going to be big. I can't fit that into an int. Mm -hmm. So they really try to make sure that you don't, what's called lose precision. Back in the day, I would be losing precision all the time. You'd accidentally, you know, lose a 0 0.5, 10 lines back, and you wouldn't find out about it until it was way, way too, way too late. Terry Andre in the chat is asking, did the display function take place of console.writeline? Exactly. So display was a function that was built in. So I could say display result. That's part of notebook. So that's a function that was available to us. We'll get a little bit more into functions in a bit. So display and console.writeline are doing the same thing. See, here's console.writeline. Here's display. Display is a function that's built into to notebooks. So yes, we could even make our own function that you know turned it a certain color or you know made it boldface or so or whatever. So we'll make some functions in a little bit. But we got tired of typing console.writeline over and over again. So yeah, Abhishek's asking the same question. Display in this context is console.writeline in a short form. Yeah. Now Karen's asking the question about this this M. You mentioned this last time too, because this is weird. If we look at oranges, oranges is a decimal. Why? Well, decimals are really big numbers. If I remove the M here, oranges goes back to a double. That's because this number 3.5 isn't big enough for C sharp to guess that this is gonna be a huge number. Now, if I went like did something like this, maybe that's gonna be like impressive enough that it's gonna turn it into you know, something else. So you can put a specifier at the end. There's a bunch of type specifiers. So like D, M. Yeah, you, you're exactly. You said D, M. So there's like C sharp type specifiers, integer or number, maybe number spec. Standard numeric form, value types. Here we go. There's a whole, there's a, all the docs have this stuff. And um, yeah, you had mentioned D and M. Types, floating point, numeric types. Yeah, here we go. Okay. So yesterday we saw floats, or lets you do nine digits, right, ish. Double gets more, and decimal gets even more. And if you want to be specific, yeah, here we go. There it is. E for double, F for float, and M for uh, whatever. Got for it. Decimal. Probably because of the M. They probably mm -hmm. ran out of time. But F for float and D for double makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So here, they're just adding that little number at mm -hmm. the end. And that's kind of convincing it. Like, here, yeah, yeah, this is a good example. Three. That's probably going to be an int. But we're going to go and force it. We're going to be specific. And we're going to say that is, in fact, a, um, a decimal. So that's good stuff. Good questions, my friends. Yeah, so um, Karen, exactly. So Karen nailed it in the chat here. Karen uh, Y says... We're using the M because we're not explicitly pointing out the type. If I didn't have that M, that decimal is going to turn into a int. Or I go like that, and I then I actually explicitly do it. So I love that our friends in the chat are following along. Uh, Scott, I want to bring us back to the console.write line and the dis display and adding these mm -hmm. things together. Could we? Add a string in here with sure. an integer or decimal and see 
the difference between what is printed out. Sure, let's do it. Okay, so we've got a new string and we could go and say apples plus Charita plus oranges. Ooh. <laughs> no. Oh, I got, yeah, okay, so look at this. Ah, uh, you didn't run it. I didn't run it yet. Mm -hmm. There you go, good catch. Look at that. Wow, okay. Okay. So this is really interesting. You brought, I love that you, you, you did this because it was 13.5 a minute ago. Mm-hmm. Right? Ooh, ooh, look at that. <laughs> ooh, we found something I didn't even think about. There Plus, we go. Okay, yeah. nice. You wanted to see a type error. Yes, to to <laughs> I was waiting for. I'm like, uh, you were I know. To, you were trying to walk me into a type error. Okay, this is great. So Sharita, very cleverly, has got me <laughs> adding a double and a decimal. And those are two numbers that are so big and so different that it's like, listen, you got to pick a type. I can't plus apples and oranges. This is good stuff. Let me try two doubles. Can we do that? Yes, yep. we can. But yeah, you knew what you were doing. So you said decimal. Those are two types that are so different that we can't really do that. And now we're, we're getting weird here. So we'll go and we'll try to actually add apples and oranges. But were we able to put in a name at the same time? This will probably be okay because we're not actually adding them adding anymore. Them. Mm -hmm. We're turning them into strings. Yep. Joe Green says, oh, Sharita, you sly goose. <laughs> <laughs> this kind of experimentation, this kind of like challenging your assumptions uh, is what's great about playing with notebooks and what's great about playing around in Visual Studio Code in this way. Because again, Sharita is coming at this uh, from a TypeScript perspective. And that's why it's fun to, to talk with you because it's like you grew up with a different language, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. I'm teaching one language. You're like, well, yeah, but the language I grew up with doesn't behave like that. And your language, TypeScript and JavaScript underneath it, does other weird stuff. Like if, if you were teaching me TypeScript, I would be like, hang on, that's super weird. Yep. And then you would tell me about all the weirdness that exists in, uh, in the JavaScript world. They have a lot of similarities, though, outside of the JavaScript side of it, you know, yeah. but it forces us to, you know, pay attention like mm -hmm. this, like we we have to in C sharp and kind of be strong, strongly tight. Yeah, I appreciate that. And um, you, you're pointing out something really important, which you have to pay attention. The computer's gonna do exactly what you tell it to do. And if you don't pay attention, if you're not explicit, then it's just gonna make some assumptions, right? It's gonna expense uh, some assumptions. So this is a great question. Terry Andre in the chat says, let's hover over result because here we've got a double We've got a string, we've got a decimal, and Terry says it's gonna be string, so let's hover over result. Yep, so the compiler has figured that out. We didn't even have to run it for it to figure out. So this is kind of what's called type coercion. It's figuring out the types for us, it's inferring it, and if it needs to, it's coercing things into the right type. So that worked out really nicely. Good stuff. Very good. Uh, Abhishek is asking what's on my name there. That's a taco my friend, that is a Scott Hanselman taco uh, on my name right uh, right here because everyone loves tacos. All right, so this operator plus means, you know, you can add strings, you can add things together, but it doesn't imply necessarily adding because if it was a bunch of strings, we'd be concatenating or mm -hmm. putting the strings onto yep. each other. All right, cool. So here's where it gets weird. Can I times? Can I multiply these things? Probably not. These are big numbers. I don't know if this is going to work. Uh, yeah, this is this is where you, you where you walked me into it before. Your types kind of have to agree. And then we can talk about very very briefly type overflows because when we were over there in the documentation, we saw how many digits these things allow. Mm -hmm. I'm going to multiply doubles together. We could get some really big big numbers. Yeah, and you can run out of space. You can run out of space. Now, these are cool. These are some of my favorite things here. Let's go back up here and I'm gonna put these uh, back into integers for the purposes of what we're gonna talk about. Now, just make it a little simpler. Go back down here. 
these are great. Apples plus equals. Okay, so they're mad at me about that one is that one. That's a decimal. division. I'll get, I'm going to get rid of that just to, to make us move on here. So apples is 10, oranges is 3. Look, look what's happening. Mm. So this here, when you say apples plus equals, you are saying apples equals apples plus 10. Mm -hmm. This is just shorthand. Oops. This is just shorthand for doing a thing that we do a lot. Mm -hmm. You might also see, and I know you've probably done this before, is apples plus plus. Yes. All right. That's just like increment. So you find yourself in a loop and you're making one more, one more, one more. And what's interesting here is that this is displaying the value. And this is not a good thing, by the way. This is not a good practice. We're changing the value of apples every time this runs. Yeah, we, yes. Yeah. So there's a side effect inside here, right? And this gets to the point that you'd made before. This is a good opportunity to put this around. Let's go ahead and just make a variable result to, you know, oops. There we go. I always forget my semicolons. You do the thing, store it, mm -hmm. and then, then do it. But here, it's the numbers are changing as I move around. So don't make changes to your app's variables uh, in the middle of displaying them. But yeah, Apple, so plus equals, minus equals, times equals, those are shortcuts, those are conveniences. Then we can test for equality. Is this greater than? We know that apples, I think, is like probably a huge number right now. This is a good one, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. Here is equal to and not equal to. Mm hmm now, I think TypeScript has a triple equal thing. Yes, we do. We don't have that. We don't have that in our world. Okay. Yeah. Abhishek in the chat is saying that apples plus equals 10 right here could be a statement and it's an expression. So in that case here, there's a side effect when you do that kind of stuff. So you got to think about those things. It has a side effect. And we saw that double equals is... Uh, how we check for equality and not equals. This is called a bang. <laughs> I mean, if someone sends you bang mail, that's like they sent you a mail with like importance. Um, and this means not equal to. So we can see false and true. So it is, it is true that apples is not equal to oranges. <laughs> All right. Oh, Todd Martin, is there a way to reset the notebook to the original state if you muck things up? Love it. Yes. So go back up to our main page, okay? And we put a link to the notebook right here. You can either, you know, undo, hit undo, control Z, or you can get that notebook. You can download it again right there. And if you click on this, it will open up in Visual Studio Code, and then you can just save the notebook away. Uh, and remember that that notebook is just a file. It's just a text file. So if you want to copy that somewhere, make a copy, download it yourself, put it somewhere, you can you can definitely do that. So yeah, you can always get back to where you were before. Good question. And I can actually just hit Control, um, Control Z, and I can get myself back. All right, loops, loops, my friends, loops. This is where we lose people. This is where we lose people. <laughs> this is where programming gets hard in my opinion, because you start adding in parentheses and these little curly dealies. Someone told me if you turn your head a certain way, it looks like a mustache. Oops. Yeah. It does. I don't see it. I mean, you think maybe like an old timey mm -hmm. 1920s uh, person yes. mustache. Okay. <laughs> so let's take a look at what's going on here. So we're saying seconds, which it looks like is going to be an integer. And we're Taking date time. Date time is built into the .NET ecosystem. It's basically an uh, an available thing. It's in it's in a uh, another class called date time. And if I say date time and I hit dot, 
these are all the things date times can do. Like is nice. leap year is like a free function. So we've got today and we've got now available to us in date time as uh, functions that we can use. And what we're going to do here is we're going to call date time dot now. And let's break this up into pieces. Okay. I'm remove the dot second. Date time dot now returns what? It returns a date time. So seconds now is an object called a date time. So let's call that now. And then I can say now dot, and that's going to have the, the date, mm -hmm. the day, right? Hour. Okay. So date time dot now made me a date time. It made me one that is now. And it's a, it's a snapshot of now, right? It's not going to be changing. It's not going to have, um, the seconds aren't going to move. It's stuck at what it is. Terry says loops, yuck. Yeah, that's where it gets real is the, is the loops. So here we've got all kinds of stuff. Date times are really complicated, but they're fun because they do stuff for you that uh, you don't have to do yourself. You can ask if it's a leap year or not and things like that. So we said now dot seconds. This is on two lines, but I can make this on one line. I didn't put it back the way it was. Okay, so we're gonna get the second of now and put it in a variable called seconds. Right now it's 55 and I'm just gonna click it. 58, 59, zero. Now we got a new minute. One, two, three. So I'm just clicking this button really fast, okay? Okay. We're displaying the current seconds. And the question is, is the current seconds even or odd? Okay. So seconds is a integer. And this is weird. I hated this when I learned about this because it didn't make any sense. It's called the modulus. I loved it. You love modulus? Okay. Mm -hmm. Then you can help me understand here. <laughs> so we're dividing seconds in half and then seeing if it divided cleanly. Yes, if there is no remainder. Mm. Okay, so let's do this. This is a great point. Let's do Charita's trick. Remainder in another variable. We'll pull this out and give it its own line. If you want to understand stuff, that's a good way mm -hmm. to do it. And then we'll put remainder down here. Okay. See if this is going to squiggle on me or if we're going to be okay. Okay, cool. All right. So the remainder is seconds divided or it's, it's, it's divided by two, but it's not the result. It's not that. And I'm not cutting it in half. I'm cutting it in half and giving the remainder to you. Okay. So let me think about this. 25 cut in half is 12 and a half or 12. And, oh, it's 12 remainder one. Mm-hmm. I got you. So then the remain. Actually, let's do that. Can we do this. And actually, you know what we can do? We can do our string trick. We can put a dollar sign here. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, look at there. I like that better than the plus. And then I'll put my semicolon at the end. Ah. Yep. Just like you said. Boom. So rem remainder is one. Therefore, if it's the case that remainder is zero, display seconds are even, and then there's no else. There's no, we don't do anything. I could probably um, do Go ahead. Or we can just probably check for uh, is even, a variable is even as a bool. And yeah, so we could make a function around that if we want. Yeah. We could wrap this and we could make a thing uh, I wonder how we can do this in, I don't know if that's possible in um, notebooks. I've not done this before. Bool is even integer. So I'm making a function that returns oh, a, a function. Bool, okay. Right? Bang out. I, I, I don't know if this, uh, I haven't done this before in, um, in notebooks, but let's find out because this is a good thing. So we'll say our remainder. So int will be something, I don't know, i. And then we'll say uh, return. I mod two. So if mod, is it even? I don't know. Is it going to let me do this? Oh, if. So if. 
Oh, it's yeah. the return. Sorry, I'm, I'm, yeah. And then no, return, I, 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 return I, I, to. I think that's right. This expression will be, but I would not all code pass. Oh, it's the thing. No, it's not. Okay. The, it's not the. If I think this will work, I just wasn't sure if I could just bang out a uh, a function in the middle right here. So then, is even remainder. Let's see if this works. Make this a little smaller. I can't see everything now. Yep. Yeah, it works. Okay, so you can make a random function. Um, we yeah, have a you question. Said, yeah, go ahead. Uh, why the double equals versus the one? Ah, that's great. That's a great question from Nathan mm -hmm. in the chat. So <clears throat> if I say i equals two, and then display i, or var, I just have to give it a var, var i. So I made a variable called i. Here's the value, it's two. I here um, assigned the number two to the value i. I need to be able to differentiate between I'm putting a number in here. We could have done that, like an arrow, but we did equals. A double equals means I'm checking for equality. So let's say i equals two, and then I'm gonna say display i equals equals two. Here I'm assigning it, I made i equals two. And here I'm asking a question, I'm saying, is i equals equals two? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get the value true. It is the fact that i is true. Now, watch this. What if I said display i equals three? Well, it's getting freaked out, can't do that. <laughs> And that would be a side effect anyway. It would change the value of i and then display it anyway. Mm -hmm. So equals equals is checking for comparison and a single equals is assigning. Great question. Habashek is asking if C-sharp has a ternary um, operator. That's pretty advanced, but we can do that in just a second. That's a great question. Uh, Joe Green is asking about if they wanted to add else. Yes, we could absolutely do that. We could say else. And then we'll put odd down here. All right, and let's do that. See if that works. We're getting the functions getting big, so I have to make things smaller. Oh, look at that, see, seconds are even, seconds are odd, seconds are even, seconds are odd, so else is working. Now here's an interesting question. You see how we have this, this little mustache here, this little curly brace? There's all kinds of controversy about this. Do you put yours here, Trita, or do you put yours over here? Um, or do you it care? depends. <laughs> I, yeah. So when I'm in Visual Studio 2019, it just it automatically goes down mm -hmm. to the next, and it looks better. It it does look cleaner. It's, yeah, I um, like it. Like that. But if I am coding on my own, doing something else, is going immediately after the parentheses. See? <laughs> and then some people. Some people do this. Oh, I, now that one, no. Yeah, so that, that, that you draw the line at that yeah. point. Like, this is unacceptable, <laughs> right? We're getting out of control. Yeah. So this is confusing to people who just get started, to so our friends on the chat. These things don't matter. This is a really good point. On C Sharp, white space in the thing. You can make some janky looking code, and it'll all just run anyway. It just looks... It, like, look, I moved it all over. This looks like trash. People, people freak out. You can make this whole thing all on one line if you wanted to be that person. And someone might say, well, that's way better. I don't know about you, but I find that a little hard to read. Yeah, I, I like multiple lines, so. Right, yeah, it's a little free form. Additionally, and this can be a little confusing if you're just getting started, is if you don't have more than one line, if you have just one line, these braces here aren't needed. Oh. Yeah, so this is weird. That works. That works. It only works. It only works because that's one line. 
Okay, now here's where it goes bad. What if I wanted to do this? Is this part of the else? Or is it just uh, chilling on its own? Right, we can test that. We can test that. I'm just going hit, to keep hitting play. See how great job is there, whether it's even or odd? Uh huh. Ah. We are tricking you by putting it here, but it it's not part of the else. It's not part of the else. You only get one line. So if you don't put your curly braces, you just get that one line. one line. If I wanted it to be, yeah, if I wanted it to be a part of the else, I need to give it a hug. And <laughs> oh, I like it. that. You like that? Huh? Yeah. Right. Now, Abhishek in the chat is pointing out that in Python, which is another language, that would work because white space and indentation matters in Python. But in C sharp, it does not. Even if I went like this, it doesn't matter. Great job is always happening because the else mm -hmm. without the curly. So you really want to have your curlies. You got to have your curlies. We you give the give a hug to the statements that you want to use. So that's super important. Good reminder. Not intuitive, right? Until it becomes intuitive. Mm -hmm, Isn't, mm -hmm. that interesting? Isn't that interesting? Joe mm -hmm. is saying that they prefer seeing him like this. I think we agree that that's kind of nice. Um, some people say that you can tell what generation someone is from. Uh, based on where they put these things. Old timers like to put the things up here. Um, but is, I mean, maybe that's a JavaScript thing. I don't know. But I, uh, I like them like this. But you can pick the style. And when you join a team, you're going to inherit their style, and you're just going to use the style that you'll decide yes. as a team. But yep. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, and that's cool. OK. All right. So we've learning about our ifs and our else's. You can also do another if. You can say else if, and mm -hmm. then have another another thing. We could say if odd or whatever. That's cool. Uh, we learned that we can put functions in the middle. We didn't actually, we kind of did this fast. We didn't really talk about this too much. We went and we spontaneously made a function that returns a bool, takes an integer. We named it whatever we want. You notice that, like mm -hmm. you mentioned yesterday, we did camel casing kind of without even thinking about it. And you had made a, a comment real quick where you had thought maybe we put if right here. Mm -hmm. and that, that yeah. feels like it might be intuitive. It might be intuitive. That would be a so, place to put an if. If and then I'll return true. I think I thought that's the, the train of thought that I had, but yeah, yeah. you don't so that's the train more of is a good one. That's a great that's a great point because that feels like from an English perspective, something that'd be cool. Uh, and I've seen people want to like do this, like return if. That would be kind of cool if that was a thing. But the trick is that this here, this part that I've selected is an expression. Yes, yep. And that expression can be put into variables. Let's just make a variable here. We'll call it, I don't know, return <clears throat> value. Okay, so I'm gonna say return value and I'm gonna assign it this expression. This is a question. If, if we did this, that's going to result in a number, uh, a remainder, like you mm -hmm, said. Mm -hmm. But this is a question implied. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a yes, no question. So yeah. ret val is going to become a Boolean. So now yes or no, true or false is in there. And when we do that, the, there's no if. Yeah, We're not yeah. asking a, an either or question. We're just returning the result. The if actually in this case is kind of the question is here in the mm -hmm, equal sign. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sign. Yeah. Good stuff. Ooh, now here's the thing. Now Abhishek made the comment before what we called the ternary. Ternary. This is a little advanced, but this is kind of fun. You'll use this every once in a while, but um, I like doing the if like this. So what Abhishek, I believe, is asking for is a a terser or a crisper way to do something like this. Let me see if I can remember how to do this. Display, uh, we're gonna call display, and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna ask a question. And our question, as you remember, was uh, is even, and we'll pass in a number, uh, seconds. Okay, so there's our, there's our thing here. 
I'm actually going to go on. You know, here, let's do this. Remember comments? Yes. Yeah, let's comment multiple that out. Lines. Okay. Yeah, multiple line comment. So let's comment that out. I'm going to get rid of our remainder here. We've got is even up there. So we're doing our seconds. Let's make sure if everything runs. So right now, we're just displaying the word false or we're displaying the word true. Now, if we want to do something about it, this is weird, but it, but it's the same thing as what's at below. We're going to put a question mark. Okay. This is what we do. You do this? Is this yes, I love this. Mm -hmm. You like this? Okay. Huh, look at that. See that? Okay, so Sharita likes this. So, expression, true or false. If it's true, do this. If it's false, do that. So I, I read this as like, huh. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> That's how I read that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's straightforward versus, yeah. in, you know. Yeah, exactly. So Joe Green says, yeah, so ternary is like shorthand. Mm -hmm. It is. It's a shorthand. That's an operator. So we saw that a plus is an operator and a times is an operator. That's a shorthand. So we just took all of this and turned it into this kind of like one liner here. And the ternary operator starts with that, that question mark. I'll make that a little bigger. And what it is, is it's Something. Let, let's go ahead and remove this. Let's just put in true. Let's just say true. So oh, is this going to ever equal even? Let's find out. Yep, it's always even. True is oh, always true. true. Change it to false. Always odd. Okay, so I'm going to go control Z. I'm hitting control Z. That's my undo. Now we got it. So we're calling this function and anything that comes out of here. Now let's get rid of that function. Let's go back. Let's go back and do seconds divided by two. Does it have a remainder? I'm gonna get rid of all of this. So Still works because we got rid of that function, which may have been a mistake, but you know, and we put the expression in here that this I think is where, in my opinion, it started to get confusing. And I like your idea of having a function because I don't, I can't read that without kind of going, oh, okay, I see. <laughs> right? There's a moment there where you're like, oh, okay, I see what they're doing. What made that easier to read, I thought, was having the function named something good mm. we named it right what I about just it. having the variable when we put remainder yeah that's a good point so that's a great point so if i if i took this chunk here and i said var remainder mm -hmm. equals this we get rid of the function mm -hmm. and then check if there's a remainder and okay then we would say remainder so then we'll have to probably, so. so. I want to see my, am I getting, ah, oh, this, now this, is this working? I don't feel like uh, this ain't right. Yeah, I, always, I feel that way too. So, <laughs> um, so this is. I haven't seen odd here. Because ah, it's always. It's always coming out true here. Because we set the remainder. Maybe our friends in the chat are gonna. So there's already an expression. So right now we're saying, you know, this is even. I it's already yeah. that's so always let's display, even. Let's display remainder. And let's see what's going. On. This is our debugging Which here. Right? Is this output. This true. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's always true. true. It's always true. Oh, you know why? Okay, here this is great. We get the seconds. What's I? <laughs> oh yeah that's what's from our function I, yeah 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 I from way up in the we didn't even think about i 
Yeah. I got a thing. There it is. Good deal. See? Uh, there we go. Cool. There we go. Now our friends in the chat, Todd Martin saying that he liked the ternary plus a comment in the code. These are the kind of things you got to ask yourself, but we just did this three different ways and it worked every time. That's pretty cool. We're learning a lot. Um, we just playing around with ifs and expressions. Mm -hmm. We didn't even get yet to uh, to loops, which are coming up tomorrow. We're going to do a lot more cool stuff. Um, I thought this was super fun. I like hanging out with you. Yeah, this was fun. I learned a lot. All right. So we're having fun learning C Sharp. I want to make sure that you follow us on Twitter and tell your friends and join us on day three. And thanks to everyone at the Reactor and Learn TV for having us. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, everyone. Take care and see you tomorrow. Bye now. Bye.